Welcome. Today we'll be looking at the Ari SR2. Uh, now the Ari SR series was uh, Ari Flex's most popular uh, 16 millimeter series, and uh, started with the SR1, that was followed up with the SR2, which was followed up with the SR3, and finally. Uh, no, it was not the SR4, uh, the, it was then the 416, which we'll look at at some other time. But today we'll look at the SR2, which is very similar, uh, uh, almost identical to the SR1. And, uh, you know, the SR3 does have some differences, but, you know, if you find a way around this camera, uh, you should be fine with any of the cameras of the SR series for the most part. Um, so I've taken the magazine off and this is how uh, this, this camera body looks. Now let's take a look um, from front to back when it comes to the camera body. So uh, this particular camera right here has a bayonet mount. Uh, the way you, you take that cover off is by depressing those two levers and then you're just pulling on it which is kind of difficult from this angle since I cannot see it, but there you go. So, uh, and right here on your operator side, um, this right here is your inching knob. So you just angle this out. And now I can rotate this and you can see our spinning mirror shutter, uh, which is a butterfly or bow tie shutter, as it is called, okay? So you can see right there, as it clears, the image is being exposed, and then it swings in, and you can see the picture through the viewfinder. So underneath your inching knob is your run switch, and this run switch has three positions. The first position is fully off. The second position down is standby. Now, what this is for mainly is that when you have a um, hand grip attached to this connector right here, which can be screwed on to this rosette, so you have this uh, uh, pistol grip right there with a separate run switch. If you have that right here, then you need to have this switch in standby for the trigger on the pistol grip to work. It will not work if this is uh, not switched to standby. And then you can press down all the way and now the camera will run. Uh, what's important to note is that down here is a very small and hidden little switch. This little metal piece right there that's sticking out, uh, that is actually a lock. So you can bring this down into the standby position and actually lock it in place. So now I, I swung this over, this little metal piece, and now I can no longer bring this up to the stop position. So all I can do is go run and standby right here, okay? So the reason why this is there is if you're, if you're shooting with this pistol grip, right, you don't want by accident uh, uh, this, this switch to be on in the off position and end up not being able to start it uh, when you need to start it potentially quickly. Okay, so um, moving on, the, the next thing right there is, is our viewfinder. Now the viewfinder uh, can be swung over to the other side. The way you do this is you need to loosen this ring right here. And this is one of those things where a lot of people seem to, you know, get, uh, uh, mistake this for, you know, uh, loosening this ring either by hand or, you know, you can see on many cameras, the marks of some, uh, uh, you know, wrench uh, with somebody trying to pry this loose. Um, this is not to a surprise because the ring looks almost identical to this ring here which you just unscrew this to remove the viewfinder and put a viewfinder extension in there. But uh, in this particular case scenario, this 
gets uh, uh, unlocked by this little um, worm gear. So you stick an Allen wrench right there and you turn this and that will start turning and loosening this ring, right? And, and different camera bodies may have it in a different position. I got another camera body right here just to show you. So this one has the worm gear right there, okay? So it's a slightly different position uh, from this body right here. So uh, once this is loose, you can now swing it over to the other side and then you use your Allen wrench right there with the worm gear to retighten that ring. And that's all that's to that. Uh, when it comes to uh, putting your lens in right here, so I've, I've, I've got a few lenses right there. This right here is a uh, Zeiss uh, 10 to 100, which is a very popular uh, lens for this camera when it comes to standard 16. It will not cover uh, Super 16, even though there are some companies that do convert this lens. Um, this is a T2. And uh, here are some uh, standard um, uh, 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 standard prime lenses. So this is a 9.5. Uh, these this right here is a 1.3, right there. Um, so this right here is a. Let's see. This this is a 12 millimeter, uh, 1.2 a 16 millimeter, 1.3, and then right here we have a 25 millimeter, uh, also 1.3. So uh, to, to put a lens on, um, it's, it's, very, it's very simple to put a bayonet mount uh, lens on. You have these standoffs right here and uh, you can see in this mount the grooves, right? I'm trying to feel them right there. And, and all you do is you insert the lens and rotate it to the right. So gently insert it, rotate it to the right, and then always give it a wiggle to make sure that it's seated correctly. Um, the, the bayonet, the Ariflex bayonet mount and the Ariflex S mount uh, have an identical flange focal distance. The bayonet camera, cameras with a bayonet mount are also built in a way so that they will actually accept um, S lenses. So S mount lenses will fit into a bayonet mount, not the other way around, of course. Uh, in order to release it, you have down here those two tabs. You press those two tabs, and as you're pressing, you rotate the lens back to the left and pull it out, and that's all there is to removing the lens. Okay. Furthermore, right here on the operator side is a built-in light meter. Now here's the thing, um, even though these cameras came standard with it, this is not something that, you know, would be maintained uh, uh, by any kind of like rental house or any, anybody really. Uh, uh, you use a handheld light meter, you do not use the built-in light meter. So uh, uh, don't, don't rely on, on this for uh, determining your exposure. In the back here, so right here you have some fuses. You can open this cap up. This is a clear cap and you can see the fuses that are in there. And if anything goes wrong, before this board burns out that's in there, probably one of those fuses will blow. And um, 
and you know and you can try just exchanging the fuse and hopefully that will solve your problem you can open this with a coin and uh, usually our cameras come with spare fuses which are right in here in this cap so you can open this up and you can see right there there are two channels in this uh, plastic cap and right in here are a couple of spare fuses that you uh, can, that will fit right into here Okay, uh, to put a magazine on this camera, it's, it's very simple. You have right here your cover. You take this cover, you lift it up and pull it away from the camera, okay? So, and then now you can see right here, so this is a standard 16 gate and we can right here, you know, we can inch this. And so now as I inch it, you will see the, the shutter swing in the way and you can also see your registration pin and pull down claw, let me just... So right here, your registration pin and your pull down claw. In this particular case, it is actually a registration pin that does this rather than a claw like in the RES. Okay, so to put a magazine on, the magazines usually come with a cover. Let me put this on here. So your magazines come with a cover and when, uh, and, and to take this off, you also have just, just like on the, on the camera, you grab it down here, you push it up and angle it out, all right? So, and here is your, your magazine, and to put it on, you're gonna, you have this lock up here, you make sure that it's in the open position. It should be labeled both in German and English. Uh, so this is in the open position right here, in this direction. And now, you're at an angle, never, never come in this camera like this, at an angle, you're gonna insert this top bracket, and then once it's in, you're just gonna angle it down, and that's it. And now you're gonna put this into the lock position, and we're solid in place. So uh, to, to uh, remove it, you just pull this back, press this button, and come up at an angle and then pull it out, okay? So again, at an angle, in, down, lock. Unlock, press the button, up and back. It's very easy and very fast to change this camera, camera magazine. In the back right here, you have some different connectors and some different lights. And this depends, you know, on your camera body. Uh, this, this may be different. These things have changed over the years. What's always stayed the same is that this right here is your power connector. So this is for a four pin XLR. Um, there are also onboard batteries. There are uh, little brackets. I'll put a picture in for you guys. So there are those brackets that will hold a battery block up here. Some of them have also been modified from proprietary uh, Reflex batteries to batteries that can, uh, to plates that can hold uh, the, uh, you know, something like an Anton Bauer or a V-mount battery. Uh, the way they hold on to it, uh, you know, is actually with magnets and the magnets will actually clip onto this metal plate right here in the back. So you can angle it away and switch it back to here. Uh, the next one over, the white one is a Fisher, uh, uh, a plug for, you know, an 11 pin plug. This here is for an external speed control. And the, the black one is really, you know, you really don't need this because this one is for a, uh, uh, pilot tone, which, you know, back in the old days, uh, people used to 
make sure that the camera is in sync with the sound recorder. This is not something that we, we bother using anymore. Um, you, uh, your camera also probably in the back has some running lights. This one uh, particularly has a whole bunch. So the, the red lights will be blinking when the camera is running. Plus there's a green light that will be on when the camera is running. Um, there are, you know, other examples. So here on this camera body, for example, you only have one red running light. Uh, but it serves the same purpose. Now, uh, the, the camera can be equipped just like any camera with a sliding base plate, and I will go over uh, uh, the dovetail and base plate setup in a different video. Uh, but they do come equipped with this uh, adapter for a lightweight um, outfit. So this right here is, is, a, is a lightweight adapter uh, for your iris rods. Uh, you see that these have, you know, uh, uh, been extended. So there are some uh, extra extension on there. Um, and it's, it's very self-explanatory. So you, you can see right there that this slides in. There is a little pin down here. So that shows you that it needs to slide in in this direction and just stick this in here and tighten it with the screw and that's all there is to it. So now you can put your follow focus unit and your mat box on here and you're good to go. Okay, so I just want to show you in comparison um, uh, the, the other SR2 body that I've got right here. So this right here is the uh, Super 16 SR2. Okay, so here we have now a Super 16 uh, version of the SR2. This is a uh, camera manufactured Super 16 version. There are some uh, modified uh, uh, Super 16 uh, versions out there. However, beware that the, um, the shutter assembly in an original factory Super 16 SR2 is different from the shutter assembly in a standard, uh, super, uh, in a standard 16 body. So uh, the Super 16s do have a, a larger shutter uh, in there. Now, uh, this camera is factory equipped with a PL mount, which is a contemporary style mount. Again, the flange focal distance never changed from the RES mount to the B mount to the PL mount. It's always the same flange focal distance. However, uh, the PL mount will not accept any other lenses. These, these will only accept PL mount lenses. Um, on the back, you can see right here, now the, the wider Super 16 gate. So uh, let me just inch the camera so you can see this better. And then there are a few more changes uh, right here. So um, also very obvious, this particular camera is equipped with uh, video assist uh, right here. So this right here is the video assist camera. Um, furthermore, this camera has been equipped with a cinematography electronics crystal speed control. So I said before that um, this Fisher plug in the back right here is designed for an external speed control, which will not be crystal. Um, however, with this uh, uh, camera being modified and equipped with the speed controller, uh, all the speeds are actually crystal. The problem with this is that you need to be careful what to set the camera speed to, because you know, when you slide this up, you can actually dial up to 99 frames per second into here. 
The problem is that this camera will not survive 99 frames per second because it's never been built uh, to run that fast. So um, even with the external speed control, uh, the maximum speeds that this camera is supposed to be able to run are 75 uh, frames per second. The, the nice thing about it is that you do know that you are crystal, so you can switch this to 24, 25, or 30 frames, and it's all crystal, uh, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, and this now brings us to loading the magazine. Now, I can't stress this enough. When you are now loading this magazine, you have to do this either in a changing bag or a changing tent or in a dark room. It's got to uh, be in complete darkness. Now, what I'm going to do is the part that's going to have to happen in complete darkness in the video, I'm going to switch to black and white. So if it's black and white, it means it has to happen in complete darkness, all right? So you get your can of 400 foot film from Kodak. Um, they used to make this in 200 and in 800, but that's no longer the case. 400 is pretty much it, and the 100 foot loads, of course. So, um, and uh, these, of course, here are, have both been opened, so they are they're not uh, the way this would look originally, but, in either case, what you would have is you would get this from Kodak and there would be a kind of like, you know, orangish, uh, uh, yellow orange uh, tape around this. And while you're still outside, what you want to do is you want to roll the end up so you can, of this tape, so you can feel it in your changing bag. Okay. And now you're going to take your can and your magazine into the changing bag or into the dark room. And from this point on, everything happens in darkness. So you're going to feel for your little tape right there, and you're going to unroll it, right? You're going to unroll this entire tape. Until you get to the end. And then I'm going to switch to a different can here now just to demonstrate it. What you're going to do is you're going to open the lid of that can and you're going to put this tape onto that lid. And then you're going to put the can on top of it, all right? And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take out your film. Now, this is just a dummy load that I have in here. Obviously, yours will be bigger, and it will also be in a black bag, just like this one. And you're going to take this out, And this now, if this was in light, the film would be completely destroyed. So again, make sure you're inside a changing bag. Obviously, this is going to be bigger. So and now you're going to take that tape that's on here off. And you also put that now onto, onto the lid where you have the other piece of tape, okay? And you can take your uh, uh, plastic bag now and put it also there. And this way, you have it now, all the pieces sandwiched together. The point of doing this like that is that you're not ending up missing something or getting one of those wedged in when you're closing the magazine. You may have the corner of the plastic bag or something wedged in there. That would be a problem because that would be a light leak. You take it out like that, the film will be destroyed. So this is a very good habit 
of putting it all together. This way you know exactly where it is and if it's not there when you come out of the changing bag, you're gonna have to start looking for that sticker, you know, or, or that piece of tape. Okay, and now we're gonna start to load uh, our film. So to open it up, we press this little button that's right here and rotate this latch over and now it's open. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those magazines get this um, odd uh, uh, white discoloration of the plastic material um, the, uh, uh, inside. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is, but it's, it's, it will not harm your film. So. You're gonna, this, this right here is your core holder. This here is your core. You can see that the core has this groove, this notch that is cut out. And there is actually a little spring-loaded lever on the core holder that's supposed to go in there. So um, what I do is I, I just press it on and then uh, you can rotate it. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to do this. I rotate it until I hear it click and I, I think you just heard it. So now I know that this, this uh, uh, little spring-loaded holder went into this notch. And the next thing you do is you swing your footage counter lever over and um, this will engage onto your load. And then you're gonna push your film into this hole right here. So let me swing this over so you can see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this film into this hole right there. And you can see that as, as I push it in, this, this gear right here is starting to turn. You see that? And I kind of like feel, I feel, you know, I put my finger there and I feel when this starts to turn. And the moment it starts to turn, I let go of the film. And, you know, let me just demonstrate this one more time. So I push it in, I'm now pushing it in, and you can see that gear is gonna start to turn. And the moment I feel this gear moving, I just grab that gear, let go of my film, and I transport that film uh, by, by turning that gear. And all, all that needs to happen is the film needs to come out here. Now I can close this, lock it, and before I take it out of the bag, I go with my fingers and my, my fingernails all the way around the door to make sure that I didn't pinch anything, right? Just to make sure that I'm 100% sealed, all right? And now I'm gonna open my changing bag and now we can come out into the daylight and finish this uh, loading of this magazine. Now this is what's called a coaxial magazine. A coaxial magazine means that the film is being transported from, the, from one side of the camera to the other side of the camera, as opposed to uh, a displacement magazine, you know, which you know, more popularly known as the Mickey Mouse ears, where the, the film load will displace from one side to the other, usually from the front to the back of the camera. Um, the, 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 the advantage of coaxial magazines is when you are on a steady cam, you're actually not displacing any kind of weight from front to back. You don't have any weight shift going on. Whereas on a displacement camera, that is an issue. Okay, so you're now gonna, the, the, the next thing is that this loop needs to have the right size. So and th this, this now is something you can actually look at. And there's down here is a mark, okay, on this magazine. And all you do is you bring your film down to this mark. And, you know, I'm gonna hold it there and with my with my gear, I'm gonna tighten it. And now this is supposed to be the size of my loop ultimately, all right? And now I can 
just look up in here where this film is supposed to go. It's essentially the equivalent of where it's coming out here. It needs to go in there. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna stick it in there. And again, this is now you can look at it. Just I have to do this upside down so you can see it, so I cannot see it. I may not be able. And I think I'm there and I can see, maybe not. Okay, I can see this gear start to move now. I'm going to grab it and take it in. All right. So now it's important to know where is my feed side? Where is my take up side? All right. So the feed side on an SR is always on the dumb side of the camera. And you always take up on the operator side of the camera. Okay. So now we're going to open our operator side. And in this case scenario, we have what is called a collapsible core. Now, some cameras will have regular core holders in them, some magazines. So then you need a spare core. Again, you can get this cans and bags and, and spare cores from any, um, uh, any film lab. But um, a lot of them do still have the collapsible cores in. So these, by the way, can come out like that. So you could put just core holders in if you have, have them. So what we want to do is we're going to click this in here, this film. So I'm just going to retract this a little bit. And now I'm just going to stick my film in here. I'm going to break the end of it a little bit. So I'm going to stick my film in here and then I'm going to click this in and seat my footage counter roller right there. And that's all there is to it. So now I'm taking up. I'm going to close this, lock it. And now as always, we're going to go around this here with some tape. Uh, to seal it off, to seal the edge off. Now, if we did this right, then we sh our our uh, our loop should be 32 perforations. So you want to count those 32 perforations, right? Make sure uh, uh, that this is correct. And then all you do is you kind of like hang this film. You, you can see these are the little latches right here. You can hang this film right there and you make sure that the film is positioned center. All right. So, and that's all there is to it. Okay. So now you put the cover on and when the time comes, you put the label on. Uh, I'm sorry. And then you put the label on and when you're ready, to put it on the camera, you just put it on the camera and that is it. Uh, one thing, unfortunately, um, these magazines have pretty much all of their footage counter labels up here broken. This just seems to break uh, very easily. You can get replacements. If you, if you bought one of those, you can get replacements for these uh, aftermarket uh, on eBay. Um, I think they, they're just very thin plastic and it's the gaff tape, you know, uh, uh, probably breaks it when, when people pull the gaff tape off, uh, it breaks it. So, but this, this right here is your footage counter. It will, you know, tell you how much, uh, uh, you still have left. Okay. So now we have our magazine loaded and we're going to put it onto our camera.
lock it in place. And the first thing you always want to do is you want to inch it manually. And you can, you heard it clicked. This essentially just ma made sure that it clicked into the, uh, uh, into the perforation, the pull down claw. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug it in. And always before you run it, there is a test button right here, which essentially runs at two frames per second. So let's give this a little try. I'm going to press it and you can see the inching knob turn for as long as I press it. So this should sound smooth. There should be no weird noise. So that sounds fine. So now that uh, that has been checked, we can run the camera and it should roll just fine. There it goes. So once you're done with your film, you want to unlock the magazine or if you're filming, you want to unlock the magazine, take it off as I showed you earlier. And now we got to download our film. Now this is something we've all, we are again going to have to do in our uh, changing bag. So we're going to put this into our changing bag and now all of our film sits in here on our take up side or part of it. So in order to take it out in the darkness, we're going to open it up. And, you know, you see we only rolled a little bit, but let's just say that this is, you know, full. And if it's rolled out, then, you know, you don't have to break it. But in this particular case scenario, I'm going to break that film. Okay. I'm going to make sure that I don't let go of the end so it doesn't unravel. And then I'm going to unlock my core holder right here. And I'm going to slip my film off. Okay, so I, I dished it here a little bit, but it's okay. So, uh, and this now is going to go into my black bag, in the changing bag again, right? This now will go into my black bag. And this will go... into my can and then you use some gaff tape or camera tape and you nicely seal that can on the outside and you're going to write on there what type of film is in there and what day you shot it and when I say what type of film is in there then it's this number right here okay behind the 500 T it says right here 7219 72 designates the fact that it's 16 millimeter film 19 designates that it's the 500 T stock okay always put it onto this label uh, because you know you might shoot different stock and whatever is on here does not necessarily mean is actually in here so it's always going to be in on on uh, uh, on the outside of the can and you also uh, want to put then the label that you put for for your magazine uh, you want to put that sticker onto here as well uh, this this uh, essentially is to to double check uh, that everybody knows at the lab what film is ultimately inside all right and that was it uh, i hope this helped you out enjoy shooting your movies i'll see you next time Bye bye